This is a hard differentiation modeling question. We have a plan view of a pool. This is it here. We have a rectangle attached to a semicircle. And we're given some dimensions. We're given this length of 2x, this length of y. And then we're also told the area of the pool is 250. And then we're trying to work out the perimeter of the pool. We're trying to show that it's equal to what we have down here. OK, so let's write out some of the dimensions on our object. So this side will also be y. The length that we have down here is a semicircle. The radius of that semicircle is x. The circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. In this case, that'll be 2 pi x, as the radius of the circle is x. Divide that by 2, as we have a semicircle here. And we end up with this bottom side being pi x. So then we can combine all of that information. We end up with the perimeter is equal to 2x, the top length, plus the two sides, plus the semicircle circumference. Now, this is not the same thing as what we have down here. In this equation, there is no y, but we have a y over here. So what we want to do is we want to get another equation which expresses y in terms of x, and we can do so by using the area. So the area we know is 250. If we consider our shape, the rectangle at the top has an area of 2xy. And the shape just beneath, the semicircle, well, the area of a circle is pi r squared, or in this case, pi x squared. But then we would divide that by 2, as we have a semicircle. So pi x squared over 2. And so we can rewrite our area as 2xy plus pi x squared over 2. So we can then rearrange that equation for y. So 2xy is 250 minus pi x squared over 2. Divide everything by 2x. So when we divide this by 2x, the 2x goes on the bottom. So that becomes 4x. Simplify. This becomes 125 over x. And in the second term, the x's cancel out, and we're left with pi x over 4. We can then put this into our perimeter equation, so replace the y that we have here with this. The perimeter then becomes 2x plus 2 lots of y, so 2 lots of 125 over x minus pi x over 4 plus pi x. We can then expand this out, so 2x plus, so 2 times 125, 250. 2 times the second term, minus pi x over 2, plus pi x on the end. And then just simplify. So 2x plus 250 over x. The last two terms, pi minus pi over 2, will give us pi over 2. On to part b. So we want to explain why x is between 0 and root 500 over pi. So in our question, there aren't any explicit inequalities given to us for x or y or area. So we're going to have to think about what are the constraints in our system. And from that, we should be able to get this inequality here. So I'll focus on the right-hand side to begin with. We have x has to be less than root 500 over pi. Why would this be the case? Let's have a look at our diagram. So let's imagine increasing the value of x and then seeing what happens to our shape. Bear in mind, the area of the pool has to be 250 meters. So if we were to increase length x, then that means that the radius of this semicircle will increase. And that will increase the area of the semicircle. Now the total area must remain constant. It must remain at 250. So if the area of the semicircle is increasing, that must mean the area of the rectangle must decrease. If this length is increasing, and the area of our rectangle must decrease, then that must mean that y is decreasing. But y can only decrease so far. y has to be bigger than 0, otherwise we wouldn't have a rectangle here in the first place. So that would be the inequality for y. y has to be bigger than 0. And when we're at that point when y is just bigger than 0, the area of the semicircle, so what we have here, will be just smaller than 250. 
because this area here would be just above zero, and therefore this area here would be just below 250. So that's one inequality that we can use. We can say that the area pi x squared over 2 of the semicircle must be less than 250. We can rearrange that. Pi x squared is less than 500. x squared is less than 500 over pi. And then we get the top part of the inequality. We get x is less than root 500 over pi. Okay, so that explains this half. Now for the left-hand side, well, x has to be bigger than 0. It's a length, so that explains the left-hand side of the inequality. And then I'll just put down a brief worded conclusion to finish off this question. And finally, for part C, find the minimum perimeter of the pool, giving your answer to three sig figs. So the perimeter of the pool, we have the equation, 2x plus 250 over x plus pi over 2x. We want to find the minimum perimeter of the pool. To minimize or maximize something, we usually differentiate. So we would do that here. Differentiate p with respect to x. So I'll just first of all rewrite this as 2x plus 250 x to the minus 1 plus pi over 2 times x. And now when we differentiate this, we end up with 2 minus 250 x to the minus 2 plus pi over 2. If we want to find out when the perimeter is a maximum, that would correspond to when the rate of change of the perimeter would be 0. So when you have a turning point. So set this equal to 0. I'll just rewrite this so we have 2 minus 250 over x squared plus pi over 2 equals 0. And I'll rearrange for the 250 over x squared. To simplify the fraction on the right hand side, I'll times everything by 2. So we end up with 500 over x squared is equal to 4 plus pi. And then I will switch these two things around. So we end up with x squared is equal to 500 over 4 plus pi. And finally, square root. 500 over 4 plus pi, which is whatever it is. And then we can sub that back into p, which gives us 59.7 six. And what is the unit that we have here? So it's in meters. We want our answer to three sig figs as well. So our final answer would be 59.8 meters. But we also want to verify that this actually is a minimum. We can do that by double differentiating. So d squared p dx squared, differentiating what we have here one more time. The first term and the last term just differentiate to make zero. The middle term will give 500 x to the minus 3. And 500 x to the minus 3, or 500 over x cubed, will always be positive for positive values of x. So if this is always positive, that means our gradient is always increasing. If our gradient is always increasing, our curve must look something like this. So this value of x and this perimeter must be the point of the local minimum.